So yeah, Woj broke the news yesterday that Alex Caruso was being traded from the Chicago Bulls to the Oklahoma City Thunder in exchange for Josh Giddy. Kind of a shocker when it happened, honestly. So what is going on, everybody? How is everybody doing today? We're going to talk about this trade, kind of what it means in the overall Western Conference view of things for the Oklahoma City Thunder, because now this team is so legit. We're going to talk about the Chicago Bulls and what I think that they're going to end up doing this offseason, because maybe... Finally, we're going to see them enter into a proper rebuild and get it out of NBA purgatory from where they've pretty much been over the last couple of seasons. So for the OKC Thunder side of things, man, this is an amazing one-for-one -one trade. Alex Caruso is one of the league's best defenders. He's an all-defensive caliber guard for the past two seasons, and you're adding him to a team that already has some amazing defenders and elite defenders. Lou Dort, an elite defender. Shea Gilders Alexander, elite defender. Chet Holmgren, elite defender. Casey Wallace was an elite last year, but he very well could be in the year two jump. This team is going to be insane defensively. Jalen Williams is also a plus defender as well, even at the power forward position. So you can realistically run a lineup out there with Shea at the one, Caruso at the two, Dort at the three, J-Dub at the four, and Chet at the five. Now, I know there's some rebounding things in physicality with Chet at the five, but man, oh man, is that an elite defensive lineup and still insanely young too. Like Alex Caruso is going to be 30 years old next season, which isn't too old. He's also eligible for a four-year, $80 million max extension. That was a big thing. Caruso entering the final year of his contract. And yeah, I wouldn't want to pay Caruso $30 million a year, but $20 million for like top end defense, that could be worth it. I'd much rather give him probably three for 60. That fourth year into his age 34 season could be a little bit scary if his athleticism diminishes and he's relying on a lot of that to be a top defender in this league. But either way, I think this is a phenomenal trade for OKC. We saw the limitations that Josh Giddy had for them in the playoffs last year. They were not able to keep him out there on the floor. It ruined their floor spacing. Teams were able to sag off on him. Teams like the New Orleans Pelicans and the Dallas Mavericks realized that. And Giddy at times didn't play in the second half, played under 20 minutes a night and this is somebody that if we did a redraft for the 2021 draft after the 2023 season he was gonna go top three he definitely had a fall off this year obviously there was the whole off the court incident with him um in a relationship with a minor at the beginning of the year and that kind of was probably hovering over him all season long and that case got thrown out the window but you're still bringing over that baggage with his off the court issue going on to the season and obviously that could have hurt the dynamic of the team's chemistry as a whole so yeah, there was a lot of question marks with Giddy this year and his shot wasn't falling. He didn't look good on the defensive end of the floor. He was turning the ball over and it just looked like he wasn't really good at anything this year. He was kind of below average in all aspects of the game. Now, he did have a nice second half or towards the end of the season, but that momentum did not carry over into the playoffs. So OKC was going to have to pay Giddy at the end of this season. He's eligible for a rookie extension right now or this offseason. But would you want to give Giddy 20, 30 million a year? No, there's a lot of question marks. Giddy making 8 million a year is nice and exciting because he's a young player still. But if Giddy's making 30 million dollars a year and he's playing like this, then you're like, all right, what did we get ourselves into? Maybe this wasn't a great idea. So OKC realized that they were able to do a one for one swap. And this is a team that has so many draft picks from the Heat, from the Jazz, from the Sixers, from the Clippers, so many picks, the Rockets as well, and they didn't have to give up a single one to go out and get Alex Caruso. That is a Sam Presti masterclass, or that's an Artaris Carney Silvas disaster class right there. So I love this trade for the Oklahoma City Thunder. If I could give it a letter grade, I would be giving it an A. I think if Caruso was like two years younger, I would give this an A+. Plus. Um, and you're, you're going to have to pay him. Uh, you're already paying Shea. You're eventually going to have to get a new extension done with Chet and J-Dub next offseason, some rookie extensions. And then obviously your rotational guys and your role players like Isaiah Joe, Casey Wallace, and Aaron Wiggins, they're going to have to get paid eventually as well. So paying Caruso 20 million a year is definitely less exciting about paying him about 10 million a year for next year because he's on one of the best contracts in the league in Chicago. Like shout out to them. Signed him to a fantastic extension when they got, or excuse me, contract when they got him from the LA Lakers. And he has been worth it 100%. Like I said, one of the league's best point of attack defenders on the perimeter and him and Shea switchability wise can have a little bit of Drew Derek White S to it. Now, I don't think Shea is as good as White and Holiday as Caruso is, but man, they're going off of that Boston Celtics blueprint. But yeah, they're going off of that Boston Celtics blueprint. And I kind of love this team going forward. Obviously, we loved it a ton already. And they have basically cap space to still go out and get a Nick Claxton if they wanted to or an Isaiah Hartenstein or a big man in free agency. And they didn't have to give up a single draft pick 
to go out and get Caruso. So, hey, if they wanted to market in this offseason, they wanted to trade for a better big man, they could definitely pull that off as well. So, yeah, job well done to Sam Presti and the Oklahoma City Thunder. I love this a lot. And, I, yeah, I would give this an A if I could. Uh, and for the Chicago Bulls. All right, so people were clowning the Bulls on Twitter. Man, I did not think the backlash of this deal for them was going to be this bad but yeah it wasn't pretty whatsoever so obviously there was rumors that there was a or deal on the table that they could have moved alex caruso at the deadline or last year for two first round picks now we don't really know the full story there there could be heavily protected first round picks they could be two water protected first and maybe this draft too and honestly I think I'm a little bit different than everybody. I'd rather have Josh Giddy than the 20th pick in this draft. Yes, you could land somebody at 20. That could be nice. Could it be a Bub Carrington? Could Jacoby Walter fall? Could you take a flyer on Tyler Smith? Like, those are all potential picks you could have gotten late in the first round this year. But honestly, like, Josh Giddy is somewhat exciting, at least. He's someone that's going to help contribute next year. Maybe he just needed to get out of Oklahoma City because of what happened off the floor this year and just needs to get his mind right as he's going to be entering into his age 22 season, and it's a big year for him. He's not going to get a rookie extension this offseason. Season. He did not play well enough, and it's too risky to give him 25 plus mil a year. Now, Chicago, I have no idea how they run their franchise, so maybe they will give him that. But this is basically their first player for player trade in quite some time, and they ended up doing this, which, you know what? I don't hate it because Giddy, you know what? He can make $8 million this year. And if you don't get an extension done, he can maybe play on the qualifying offer. Like, that's a realistic candidate, I think, that could play on the rookie extended qualifying offer in his fifth season. So, you're going to have Giddy for a couple years. I, it's not going to be pretty defensively. He was surrounded by elite floor spacers and defenders in OKC. Like, playing next to Shea has done wonders to his game. And Chet last year, um, and J-Dub, obviously, for two years. And some of these other guys, and Ludort for the course of his career. It's going to be a lot different going from that to either playing with Zach Levine or playing with basically Kobe White and Ayo Desunmu, who are good offensive players, not as elite shooters as like Jada Brashea is, and they're not as good um, as defenders as they are as well. So Giddy's going to have a new role. He's going to ask to do a little bit more. He's going from a different head coach in Mark Dagno to Billy Donovan, different style of plays. Billy Donovan maybe has some thunder ties to him still in Chicago. Uh, but I think it's a little, It's I think it's still exciting for Chicago as a fan. I know you would have liked a lottery pick for Alex Cruz. So I know you would have liked maybe a future first round pick and you didn't get one from a team that had all the draft picks under the sun, but it's a lost cause at this point. So I'm happy they were able to at least get something that's exciting that, that you could show your fan base in Giddy who has shown good potential at times in this league. They're going to have to surround him with some good defenders. Is there an elite perimeter defender in the room in Chicago anymore? No. That was Alex Caruso. Lonzo Ball is not going to be that guy. Javon Carter is probably your best bet. I don't know if Giddy's going to start. I don't know if he's going to come off the bench. I don't know if he's going to play the one. I don't know if he's going to play off ball. There's a lot of question marks to Giddy's game, but I think what I'm excited about in Chicago is they're finally going to enter into at least a retool. DeMar DeRozan's a free agent. Don't, don't resign him, please. Please, please, please. I don't want you to do that. You resign DeRozan, you're basically locking yourselves into the ninth seed next year. Why do we need to do that again? Your pick is top 10 protected. Do you want to lose the 11th overall pick in the 25 draft? No, you do not. No, you do not. Because that trade uh, was one from the DeMar DeRozan sign of trade, or that's going to eventually catch up to you. So yeah, you should try to bottom out in the Eastern Conference. I know that's not exciting, but you need to bottom out to eventually, hopefully contend for a title one day with this. I don't know if it's anybody on this team right now that will be on them when they're competing for a championship. So for Chicago, if I had to give this a letter grade, I'd probably give it a B. Uh, I think Josh Giddy is more exciting than getting a future first round pick that could end up in the late 20s, um, and who knows what that could be. So at least you got somebody that is proven to play at the NBA level. Like you're going to trade him for a pick that's an unknown that's going to be later in the draft, and who knows? They may never even have one bright moment in the NBA, but you're getting Giddy, who has shown some promise. Hopefully, whatever happened off the court is behind him, and they're able to figure that out, and he can change his motto, his style of play, and really adapt to Chicago. That could be a fun run and gun team. Like if Giddy's willing to be someone that's just going to run the floor with Kobe White and Ida Sumu by uh, his sides and they can pull into spot up threes. They're going to be able to cut slash for him. Uh, this roster, like I said, though, is still very thin. You have the Zach Levine question this offseason. Philly's been kind of out of those talks. I don't think Orlando does a Zach Levine trade. Does Utah try to do something and get Levine for the cheap? And then they're able to try to compete for a playing tournament spot next year. That's a possibility. Malik Monk re-signed with Sacramento. So maybe that is not really a possibility of them going out and getting Zach Levine. So there's not a lot of Zach Levine suitors out there. So they're going to kind of have to figure out what they're going to do with him. I would like to see him off this team next year because that could free up some good money. Maybe Brooklyn 
We'll take a flyer on him. I don't know. But you want to kind of rebuild. If you can move Vucevic, I would as well. Guys, I would like for them to target at 11. Let's not target a guard. You have way too many of them on your team right now. So, like, I'm not really excited about Isaiah Collier or Jared McCain in Chicago. So, I would kind of like some of these higher upside wings, like a T. John Salon, like a Jacoby Walter, like a Cody Williams, a Ron Holland. If one of them falls to 11, I would be all over that. I don't think Donovan Klingon falls to 11, and trading Alex Caruso is probably your best bet in trading up for him, unless you want to part ways with Io Desumin, which you could, but I don't know. He's on a great contract, and he was really good last year, so you probably don't want to do that. So you could look at a wing there at 11, or you could look at a big man like a Kalel Ware, or you could look at potentially a Zach Eady if you really wanted to. Um, maybe you can experiment with Vucevic at the four, which may not be great defensively, but could work out offensively for his game, um, and just being able to space the four if you add in a non-four spacing pick, like if it ended up being Donovan Klingon in this draft. So yeah, I'd love to know your guys' thoughts and opinions on this trade. Let me know what you guys think for the OKC side of things, and let me know what you guys think for the Chicago Bulls side of things. Do you think I'm being too nice to Chicago? Do you think I'm being too harsh on Chicago? And do you think I'm maybe being too optimistic about this team? thinking that they're finally going to enter into a rebuild and Josh Kitty can revert back to his 2023 ways. So yeah, let me know what you guys think. Drop a thumbs up if you guys enjoyed this style of video and I'll catch y'all in the next one. Peace.